Uh, look, thank you all very much. The Australia-China relationship gets stronger and stronger. It is built on so many connections. It's built on great economic engagement. It's built on history. But above all, it is built on family. There are 1.2 million Australians of Chinese heritage, two of whom, hey Craig, how are you? I was quoting him yesterday <laughs> in support of one of my arguments. I don't know the Labor Party agreed, appreciated it. Good to see you. Uh, but it is, but two, two of whom are Lucy and my grandchildren, our son and daughter-in-law's children. So it is a, it's, a, it's a very deep relationship and it gets deeper all the time. And we have literally hundreds of thousands of uh, Australians and Chinese now going back and forth, uh, studying in each other's countries. The, uh, the, all of the engagement is at, it is, it, it is at enormous levels and growing all the time. And you know, it is uh, 24 years is not a very long time, uh, truthfully. But uh, I think back to when I was uh, in a, uh, a, does anyone here know Hebei province well? Uh, Jung Jaco, right? Jung Jaco, I'm sure, is full of five-star hotels now. Uh, I, was, I was there in the early 90s negotiating a, uh, a mining project, which became uh, quite, a, quite a large uh, zinc mine, actually, now, listed on the London Stock Exchange. I remember working there with the Geological Bureau. And, uh, you know, as China was short of capital uh, and it was a different world, the growth that we have seen uh, has been enormous. But you know what? In those days, the partnership between Australians and Chinese, the spirit of working together and the engagements that came from Australian Chinese was so important. I mean, our, one of our geologists, uh, some, of you, some of you may know him, Joe Bo, who is a, you know, Joe, he was, a, he was uh, educated in China, did his PhD in Australia, and has been doing business back and forth ever since. You know, this is when I say I talk about family and engagement. So much of this is being driven by people and those personal ties. And that's why it's very important uh, to ensure that where you often, you'll see in the media, and uh, sometimes you'll see from politicians, and I know there's been a bit of negativity expressed by my uh, political opponents uh, in the course of today's sessions, you can often see a lot more negativity presented than is actually the case. That engagement, that opportunity, building those economic uh, achievements uh, is one that is happening at a very personal level. So always important to reinforce the reality of the relationship and the relationships above all. Now, we're seeing very strong economic growth in Australia. Uh, we're seeing st the strongest jobs growth that we've had uh, ever. Actually, last year was the strongest jobs growth in Australian history. Uh, and we've, uh, we're, we're seeing that because, in large part, we have embraced free trade. You know, we, uh, I remember when the G20 was in Hangzhou, uh, one of the most beautiful cities. I don't know how many of you have been out on the West Lake at dawn, but that is one of the most extraordinary experiences with the beautiful islands, the artificial islands and the lake look as though they're floating. Uh, it's a magical place. But we were there, we had the G20 there, and uh, the, both uh, Premier Xi and I used different, the, different metaphors to talk about protectionism. He talked about it as being uh, like locking yourself into a dark room uh, with, and cutting yourself off from others. And I, I used a slightly different metaphor. I said that uh, uh, anyone who thinks protectionism is a, a ladder to get you out of the low growth trap is kidding themselves. It's not a ladder, it's a shovel to dig that trap much deeper. And as all the economists here know very well, we actually have seen that movie before in the 1930s. So uh, protectionism is not the answer. And that's why we are unashamed advocates of free trade. And you know, Right now, when you add up our free trade agreements, both in, in place, agreed and, and in force, and under negotiation, we have an agenda that will provide better access for Australian businesses to markets totaling 65 trillion US dollars or 80% of global GDP. 
And what, that is what has been providing us here in Australia with the ability to recover from the big shock of the uh, end of the commodities construction boom, because of course we had a prices boom, uh, you know, when iron ore shot trebled. Uh, we all remember that, those halcyon days, and then there was a huge amount of investment uh, which supercharged the economy and resources, uh, investment in, resource, in the resources sector, uh, I think got up to about 14% of, uh, uh, of total uh, investment across the country. Uh, that was always going to scale back. How do you avoid having a hard landing? Well, a big part of that was uh, the big export markets that we opened up, and of course, no one bigger than China. So we both committed to more free trade, more open markets, and we know, both China and Australia, know that is when the jobs, that's what drives jobs. Now, from time to time, there will be differences uh, in, in terms of issues, particular issues, but the important thing is we deal with them as friends uh, with respect. Mutual respect is the absolute key, and uh, that's, what we, that's what we undertake, and I know that's what characterises our relationship. Uh, sometimes you'll get issues uh, at a fairly granular level. Um, you know, recently there were reports of containers of wine being held up on, on the docks. Well, we went to work to ensure that that could be resolved, and indeed so it was. And uh, the, uh, thanks to the Trade Minister, Steve Chobo, and all of our officials, our trade officials, we're able to work through issues like that. So the important thing is to keep building the relationship. As I said, it's based on mutual respect. Yes, we have different political systems, but we, as long as we respect each other, uh, recognise that we have so much in common to share, and above all, recognise that we, are, we have a great economic relationship, which of course always fills the pages of the Financial Review, uh, but it is a family relationship as well. You could not imagine modern Australia without our 1.2 million Australians of Chinese heritage, and it is, a, it's, it is just part of our extraordinary story, this great Australian project, the most successful multicultural society in the world. So I'm filled with optimism about the relationship. I think we should all be positive about it uh, and recognise the strength of the engagement. Uh, and also note that uh, sometimes in the media, uh, there is always going to be an, you know, an emphasis on differences, on conflict, on, cha on problems. Overwhelmingly, the relationship is strong and by any measure, getting stronger.